Hello and welcome back. So, in this video we will look at principal component analysis, I we promise that we will we'll just take a look at it uh, because this is one of the techniques used for data preprocessing or data normalization when you before you use them as that input to machine learning algorithms or deep learning algorithms in general. Okay. Um, see theoretically what happens is um, increasing the number of features should improve performance. Okay. However, as you, um, as you increase the number of features there are some problems because as you it turns out that uh, many features leads to worse performance. Okay. So, if you have lots of features that leads to worse performance because what happens is we need more training examples if you have more features. Think of it uh, as, as you know, filling up you know in this is case as this example show you know if you are if you have only one dimension. So, then we can fill up uh, we can sample that dimension with fewer data points. However, as your dimension becomes 2 you need more data points to sample the entire space of your problem and also as you as you as the number of dimensions keep increasing the number of points you need in order to sample the space of your problem begins to increase. And so, if you have lot more dimensions and less number of data samples you run into problems with training your algorithm. Okay. So, the solution to this problem is dimensionality dis, uh, reduction okay, wherein we reduce the number of features that represents the data. Okay. So, how do we do uh, how do we do this? Um, the idea is to reduce the dimension by selecting subsets okay, subset which is uh, by, by feature elimination and uh, we, the way we do that the algorithm that does that that we are going to see it is that's what we refer to as um, a um, principal component analysis. So, in this case we have a data with two features number of cigarettes per day and height this is some sample of the population and we do not at this point we do not worry about what this data was collected for what is the classification or regression algorithm we just know that there is some these are these two data sets are there. Okay. Okay. So, there are two features and it seems like what is more important to observe here is that the features increase together. So, they are correlated. Okay. So, I would like you to go back and think about the naive base algorithm where we saw that our um, um, where the where the assumption is that the features are not correlated actually. Okay. So, in, in this case if the features are correlated can we reduce the number of features to 1. So, this is a very easier problem to visualize. So, that is why we work with 2 features. So, typically in machine learning problems you realize that there will be hundreds of features and then you will be forced to deal with a completely different set. So, in this case we have um, uh, features which is height and cigarettes per day and they seem to be correlated. Also remember if there are only 2 or 3 features we can actually plot these correlation plots and actually manually eliminate some of them right that is a possibility. Okay. Uh, but then let us say if you have hundreds of features you can imagine the number of correlation plots you have to do to see uh, uh, how, how, how things are correlated okay, how which of the features are correlated. Actually PCA is another way of looking at it, okay. it tells you which are the most uh, uncorrelated features and which ones are really significant because they are correlated to other features in some way or the other. Okay. So, the way to do that can we reduce the number of features to 1. So, the way to do that is if you can fit this line, if you can figure out this line okay, and we can if you can project the values um, of these training points onto that line, then all we need is the location of this projection along this line okay. that will be your new axis you can think of it. So, the way to think of PCA uh, at least in physical problems is the rotation of your axis. So, if you go back, so this is your axis you have cigarettes per day and height and the idea is now we know that there is some correlation. So, can we rotate these axis these two axis. So, this axis come here comes here and this axis rotates this way where the other axis the values along the other axis are very small values are not very small and the values along this axis are very large. Okay. So, then we can afford to ignore the other one. Okay. 